Bob, there's something out the window. No, I'm not making it up. Bob, it's... Can you come here? Bob? Bob! Bob! Let's back up a bit. Do you like tongues? Well, if you do, you'd like the work of Dr. Kurt Schwenk. That's a good science name. Schwenk. Now, Dr. Schwenk is no run-of-the-mill amateur tongue man you might meet in a bar. No, Dr. Schwenk goes deep. He's been studying tongues for decades. No, Jerry, it's not a fetish. If a scientist does it, it's an area of interest. In particular, Dr. Schwenk has been fascinated by reptiles in the order Squamata. This includes all... Li Jerry, do we have a different shot? This includes all lizards, all snakes, Jerry. That's not a snake. I know it's on its belly, but it has legs, Jerry. All right. It includes all lizards, all snakes, and the Amphisbenians, the worm lizards, which is apparently a thing. All of these animals arose from a common ancestor, but as they evolved, they didn't all quite agree on what exactly the tongue should be used for. Now, the early tongue was sort of a basic swallowing assist, but the ancestors of the squamates asked evolution if there was time for a modification. Evolution was like, oh yeah, there's time. And so they said, we'd like to, wait for it, smell with our tongue. F*** off, really? All right, we'll figure it out. But the snake ancestor pulled evolution aside and said, I'll give an arm and a leg to be the best at it. And that was the start of the negotiation. But by the end of it, the snake had a tongue that was 100% committed to a kind of smelling. Wait, how do I swallow? The snake said. Evolution winked. Oh, you'll get the hang of it. So the snakes evolved a tongue that is long and thin and smooth. It is deeply forked and each tine tapers to a microscopic tip that may or may not look like a Stone Age sex toy. Some lizards, like the monitor lizard, evolved a very similar tongue, but with one very interesting difference, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, we say that these animals smell with their tongues, but that's sort of like saying people think with their dicks. It gets you in the ballpark of a behavior, pun intended, but it's not really true. Like most squamate tongues, these tongues are used to sample molecules on the ground in front of them. But these forked tongues have an advantage. The tines spread apart and allow them to sample two different points, one to the left and one to the right. In a single flick, they can sense the difference between these two points. This allows them to sense the edges of a trail they are following. It's sort of like they can smell in stereo. Here's the thing though, these tongues are more like fingernails. They don't sense anything directly. They have to transport these molecules to two little holes on the roof of their mouths, which lead to the vomeronasal organs. Now I know what you're thinking, you little smarty nipple. How do tiny molecules on the bottom of the tongue tines get to little holes in the mouth on the top? And how do they do it while keeping the two signals separate so they can smell in stereo? And here's the other thing. When they open up their mouths, you might be wondering where the hell did the tongue go? It disappears into a hidey hole sheath like a dog's erection. It's not that big hole. That's the glottis, a tube that allows them to breathe when they're deep-throating a squirrel's butt. Here, you can see one of the tines peeping out the sheath. And yes, that's Dr. Schwenk's blood right there. He's a badass. So here's how they do it. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like one of those ink blots that the brain witches make you look at. And they say there's no right answer, but it's always a demon with horns. Can't fool me, brain witch. Anyway, here is the tip of the tongue. Above it are the ducts that lead to the vomeronasal organ. And below it are salivary glands. And you can see that the tips rest in these little grooves. Here's a slightly more simplified version. There are grooves on the bottom of the mouth lined with salivary glands. The tines rest in these grooves, and as the mouth closes it creates two separate channels. A further squishing forces saliva in each of the channels up and into its own duct. But in that process, saliva washes over the tines and releases the molecules to be sensed. And that is how they can smell in stereo. Now, snakes do something that other fork-tongued lizards don't do. They flick their tongues in the air in a repeated oscillating up-and-down movement. You try. Try flicking your tongue up and down very quickly. When humans do this, it's called an HR violation. But why do the snake do? Dr. Schwenk know why. They seem to have figured out how to sample molecules in the air in a way that still lets them sense the difference between concentrations on the left and on the right. If you farted in an elevator with a bunch of snakes, they would all turn to you. None of this smelt it, dealt it bullshit. But molecules in the air are all mixed, sorry, but molecules in the air are all mixed together. So Dr. Schwenk wanted to know how they did it. 
he had a snake oscillate its tongue through a bunch of floating particles illuminated by laser light. During this little snake rave, he noticed two pairs of vortices, little spinning pockets of air, two on top, two on the bottom. These spin in such a way that they pull in air from the left and from the right, and then shoot it upwards or downwards between the vortices. This creates two distinct columns of air through which the tines move. These streams of air allow the tines to collect molecules from the left and from the right at concentrations that can be sensed. So the snake has that going for it. Now, meanwhile, there was a bit of a kerfuffle with the skinks. The skinks have lovely tongues, a bit wider, not forked, and its surface is covered with overlapping scale-like papillae, making it very smooth. Good for sensing and tracking prey, but also for swallowing. A nice balance. But there was this one punk, always sucking on blue raspberry Jolly Ranchers. Until it became permanent, let that be a warning. She wanted more help catching food. Because let's face it, those little hands are useless. So the blue-tongued skink evolved a tongue that has the ability to deform itself into a kind of prey mitten. It also produces a thick mucus to make that smooth surface stickier. Think sinus infection, but in your mouth. <laughs> Are the new viewers gone yet? Now when the word got out that you could use your tongue like this, well, the Iguanians wanted to go all in. The Iguanians include iguanas, but also many other species of lizards, all of which have evolved tongues highly specialized for capturing prey. They still use the tippy tips of their tongue to sense the world by licking it like it was a postage stamp from the 80s. But when it's time to eat, they roll that part back and under. This exposes an area of the tongue which is a marvel of engineering. Instead of being scaly and smooth, it's bumpy and looks a bit like a snowman's baby maker. These are covered in a forest of finger-like papillae, and the tips of the papillae are covered in a shag carpet of plumo cells. But this is a shag carpet of doom. These papillae can stick to prey through wet adhesion. Now you've probably experienced some wet adhesion. Not like that, you perv. You've experienced this if you've tried to separate two surfaces with a thin layer of liquid between them, you perv. I know what you're thinking, you naughty bunglet. Why have so many? Why not just have a single giant papillae? Well, this is because the resistance to being separated has to do with the tendency of liquids to form this curve or meniscus around the outside of the contact area. Therefore, the resistance is proportional to the circumference and not the area of contact. It's quite a compelling graphic, isn't it? <laughs> Having lots of small papillae gives you more circumference in total, and therefore more resistance. Now once contact is made, the prey is pulled back incredibly quickly. Although it is totally f***ed, the prey has inertia on its side, which resists the sudden acceleration. The papillae stretch and absorb some of this force before their adhesion breaks. But there's a backup plan. A special watery stringy mucus that gets stiffer under tension holds onto the prey through the violent snap. And because of all this, there is very rarely a miss. Now this cricket already thinks it's having a shitty day. It gets worse. Wait for it. <coughs> Told you. In the same way that the snake went all in on the sensory tongue, there is one iguanian that took tongue prey capture to the extreme. The chameleon has a tongue that acts like something between a slingshot and squeeze popping a watermelon seed between your finger and your thumb. Prior to the shot, a series of muscles put tension on collagen fibers, and like stretching a rubber band, this stores potential energy, which is then released in an explosion of tongue. Chameleons can so accurately sense the distance to their prey that just prior to contact, a dimple forms on their tongue ball. Although they are equipped with iguanian papillae and mucus to hold on to the prey, they also make use of this tongue glove to wrap around it and hold on. This is necessary because on the way back, things get a little floppy. <laughs> it's like when you feed out a tape measure just a little too far. <laughs> or take half a Viagra. <laughs> So if someone tries to impress you by tying a cherry stem into a knot, you just say, big deal, what else can your tongue do? No, that's suggestive, isn't it? Big deal, how fast can you flick it? No, that's, how about, call me when that thing's covered in mucus. That's good. No, I told them that I was working on something called taste, but they wanted to smell with it. 
No, I hear you. It's crazy. Oh, and I forgot to tell you about the gecko. You know what it said? It said it wants to lick its own freaking eyeballs. So I asked why, and it said it doesn't want eyelids anymore. You know how long it took me to make those? I mean, sometimes I don't even know why I'm putting in all this effort. Lick your eyeballs. Why don't you go ahead and lick your d I mean, at least our tongues are normal. Not like all those tongues.